Chris, you certainly put us in the mood. And now to return to the Court of Inhuman Relations and that legal eagle of... Bubba Hello? Murray, yeah. Attorney uh, this is Johnny Goodell. James okay, put him on. Mr. Jameson? Well, this is a pleasure. Now, they told me you were getting back from Brazil today. The show's terrific, isn't it? Uh-huh. Great idea, this kangaroo court. The sponsor. First time he's heard the show, probably wants to congratulate me. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Jameson. It sounded like you said, get it off the air. <laughs> A lot of noise in here. Uh, uh, hang on a minute, will you? Any more promotions, I'll have the court cleared. Whom did you say was asleep, Mr. District Attorney? The defense counsel, Your Honor, Valdemar Humbug. Go ahead, Mr. Jameson. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. Get it off the air. <laughs> Get it off the air? Oh, but, Mr. Jameson, your program is an outrage to the legal profession. Ridiculing lawyers, making them out nincompoops and charlatans. But what's wrong with that? Do you realize that I'm not only the head of Ormsby Jameson Products, but an attorney and an officer of the Counselors Club as well? But your advertising agency okayed it. Mr. Button himself. Button. If I hadn't been out of the country, he'd never okayed it. But, Mr. Jameson, I gave up all my other shows to devote all my time to this one. You, you, you can't just take it off the air like, like, like that. Oh, can't I? Well, you'd better have a new show ready next week. Or I'll find one myself. I'm taking the plane for Hollywood tonight. Without Button. Mr. J... Oh, oh. Right show, Johnny. Finish right on the nose. You lucky guy, you. Fishing, Mr. Sullivan! Fishing, Mr. Sullivan! Hey, boy. Telephone. Thank you. Miss Sullivan speaking. Long distance, put them on. Corey Sullivan's got more on the ball than any writer in radio. She'll get me a show. After the way you yelled at her for going to Las Vegas for a rep, you'd better write her a letter. Hi. Hi. Again. I thought I told you guys to stay out of here. Oh, Mr. Goodell, stop ranking us with the Ricky Ticks. We know there's a place for us. You know, if I keep on throwing you guys out like this, I'll have to put in swinging doors. Those yeah, are nice. Now get out of here. Come on, and don't come back. I told you that once before. Oh, all, right, all, right, all, right, all right, all right, all right. Yes, Mr. Goodell? 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 Yes, Mr. You're Johnny. My Johnny. You know, whenever your voice has that light in your eyes, I know something's brewing. What's up? Now, honey, is that a way to talk? I just call because I miss you. Still love me? You know I do. The sun is doing wonders for me. I'm beginning to sparkle almost as much as your diamond. That's what I want to hear. Wait a minute, dollface. This sounds like a fast and feverish buildup. Come on, get to the point. <laughs> There is no point. I just called to hear your sweet voice. Or oh, as a matter of fact, there, there is something you ought to know. Jameson canceled the Humbug show and... Oh, so that's it. But honey, this is on the level. You've got to come back. You're my only hope of getting a new show in time. Well, if you're really on the level, why don't you hop on a plane and come up here? I might be persuaded. There's going to be a full moon tonight. But Corey, Jameson will be here today. Well, give him my love doll face and try to think of something. I'm not exactly in a thinking mood. Bye. Corey, listen to me. Hello, Corey. Surprise, surprise. Guess who? I don't know, but it's not being crossy. Anybody with one ear can tell that. Scintillating, my dear. Your dialogue is positively scintillating. So's yours. Tell me, what brings you here, Leroy? Isn't this place a bit rich for your blood? <laughs> Whimsical little gal. <laughs> Relax while I change. We did Leroy. Okay. Say, uh, by the way, how are you and Johnny getting along lately? Feel it, Leroy. There's something steaming under those pretty curls. Frankly, I came down here just to be near you. Oh, 
Where have I heard that before? Oh, I don't know about that, but I do know something you haven't heard before. Now, this is strictly on canoe. Oh, strictly. Well, Lou Hurley just phoned me that Jameson canceled the humbug contract. Giving Johnny one week to get a new radio show together. He can do it. I think. Not without you, he can't. Why don't you think of your career? Team up with me, write a radio show starring me and my golden saxophone. I'll produce it. Why, we'll sell it to Jameson before Johnny even gets started. If you think for a minute, I... just a moment. Don't make any hasty decisions. That only shows lack of good judgment. Why don't you ride back to Hollywood in the car with me, and we can talk it over on the way. How soon do we start? Just as soon as you can get out of those scanties. Don't you think I'd better put on some clothes first? They might stop us in Pomona. <laughs> you certainly have convinced me. You mean about us being partners? No, that I should have taken a train. Yes, we are. Where can we get a mechanic? Just two miles ahead in Clearwater. Would you drive us in? Well, what if people's cars? They don't help each other. Climb in. Come on. Luke will fix you up. Sakes of life, I forgot. Luke wouldn't be over in the garage now. He'd be on Pinky's radio program. He's my grandson. The mechanic? <laughs> no, Pinky. It's Saturday, you know. Everybody in Clearwater is on Pinky's radio show Saturday. Everybody? Oh, nearly. Good, Luke. Well, thank you, Pinky. Uh, tell us, Luke, around Clearwater, you're considered quite a hand with the gals, aren't you? <laughs> well, shucks, Pinky, I, I do all right, I guess. You know what they did to your forefathers when they got a bit too romantic? Can't say as I do. Show them, boys. <laughs> They're putting Luke in one of those old-fashioned Puritan stocks, you know, where you put your hands through the holes, and you put your feet through the holes, and they lock you up. Now that we're making you nice and comfortable, Luke, how would you like to have a little honey to keep you company? Well, all right, I guess. Well, all you have to do is answer this question. If you don't get it right, we take some of your clothes off. I mean, like your shoes or your socks. But don't worry, 
Just because people are funny is different. Even if you lose, you get the honey. Now, here's your question. How far away can you see a candle at night? 10 feet, 30 feet, 200 feet? Well, I could see one at 200 feet. Are you sure, Luke? Sure. No, I didn't say the candle was lit. Off with the shoes and socks, Mr. Tipper Siegel. <laughs> Luke, you should have known the answer to that one. You lost the quiz game. Now do I get the honey? Absolutely. Jerry, bring on the honey. <laughs> Folks, we really are going to give Luke the honey. All over the soles of his feet. Smear it on stick, Jerry. Luke didn't think he was going to get that kind of honey. Just a minute, Pinky. How are we going to get that honey off Luke's feet? People are funny, takes care of everything. Lem, bring in the honey remover. <laughs> hey. Folks, I wish you could see the nice, friendly bear they just brought out here in the center of the state. Her name is Rosie, and she loves honey. Yeah. Look at Rosie flicking her tongue out. <laughs> Luke, we're going to let the bear eat the honey. And if you can hold in from laughing, you win the prize. <laughs> I sure can try. All right, ready? Let her lick the honey. Wait a minute, wait a minute, please. Uh, excuse me, folks. These people are in trouble, Pinky. They need Luke to fix their car. Oh, I'm having fun. I don't want to fix nobody's car now. Why, Luke? Oh, my goodness, I forgot. I want everybody to meet Miss Sullivan and Mr. Brinker. <laughs> My grandson, Pinky Wilson. How do you do, Miss Sullivan? Hello, Pinky. <laughs> Say, aren't you Leroy Brinker? Oh, uh, yes, that's right. <laughs> oh, folks, we're really honored. One of the big people of radio just walked into our studio. You all remember Leroy Brinker? And his golden saxophone. Oh, and his golden saxophone. <laughs> Thank you very much, folks. It's very gratifying to know you haven't forgotten me. I just want to say bonjour, folks. That's French. As a matter of fact, I speak French rather well. Uh, it was just last night I went into a restaurant and I ordered the entire meal in French. And was the waiter surprised? It was a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and on the way home on the bus... Oh, speaking of buses, have you folks ridden on any buses recently? Boy, are they crowded. I rode on a bus yesterday that was so crowded even some of the men were standing. if I may. It seems there was a man and his wife who were sitting in the living room, and the phone kept ringing and ringing. And he'd answer it each time. He'd say, oh, I'm sorry, you've got the wrong number. <laughs> no, no, wait till I finish the joke. <laughs> and this happened four or five times, you see. And finally, the wife said, honey, what seems to be the trouble? And the husband said, I don't know. He says, some darn fool must think this is the Weather Bureau. He keeps calling up, asking if the coast is clear. I just went out and fractured that uh -huh. audience. Story. What's all this? Fan mail for Pinky Dinky's program. 
boy, there's enough of it here. He's really popular, isn't he? Mm -hmm. People are funny. Just ordinary people playing parlor games. Audience participation. A show with real human interest. Heart. You amaze me, Leroy. I really didn't think you'd catch on so quickly. What an idea for a radio show starring me. Why, with you writing it, Jameson will grab it. Mm -hmm. I think Jameson will go for it. You mean that it's all set? We're partners? Uh-huh. Angel, you've made the right decision. Now, as soon as the show is over, I'll make Pinky an offer. Oh, look, Leroy, let me do the dickering, will you? Well, suppose I should get a brilliant idea. Let's take a chance on that, shall we? Well, don't forget, all come next week. We have some very funny stunts arranged for you. Mr. Wilson, could I speak to you, please? Yes. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Mr. Wilson, I want yeah, to tell you how... your radio show, the idea, I mean. Coast to Coast, sponsored by a big-name product. You mean sell people a funny? Yeah. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. Well, come, come, Mr. Wilson, let's be sensible about this. Well, Mr. Brinker, you really got the wrong idea about this. You see, it isn't my show. It belongs to, uh, Mr. Griffin there, and Mr. Parkus, and the Tilliam sisters, and Mr. Pippensiegel more than anyone else. You see, I work in Mr. Pippensiegel's drugstore, and I got the idea for the whole show on his time. But if you can sell the program, Pinky, this is the only entertainment a lot of people in Clearwater have. We haven't even got a church large enough for socials or to hold meetings for the Clearwater Boys Club. I'm the leader. I know, but if you should sell the program... I think you're perfectly right, Mr. Wilson. This show does belong to the people. How can you say that? Uh, will you all excuse us, please, oh. for just a moment? Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Leroy. Thank, Thank you. She <laughs> understands. I think you're making a mistake, Pinky. What kind of a partner are you, anyway? Here, shove this under your coat quickly. What's this all about? It's a complete record of the show. It has everything you need on it. I don't get it. Look, take it with you. Have the car fixed. You leave this pinky to me. I'll handle him. Oh, strategy, eh? Uh-huh. Running fine now, Luke. You sure did a swell job. Be gentle with her now. She's in great pain. Corey! Easy now. Be careful. Corey. Oh, wait a minute, boy. What happened? Oh, poor girl. She tripped over my shoelace. It was lucky I was standing close enough to catch her. She just sprained both her ankles. Oh, oh. She can't drive home with you tonight. It'll be too painful. We're going to take her home with us. Will you help her in the car while I have to get something? Thank you, folks. Uh, would you put those in the car, please? Yep. Come on, fellas. Let's return these coats. What's the idea of the big act? Somebody has to stay here to get Pinky to sell his program. I think I'm a bit more appealing than you. There's no argument there, my pet. Now, look, take the record back to your office and don't talk to anybody. Just sit tight till you hear from me. Fine pack of writers. What I want is a show with the Sullivan touch. Hello? Yes. The Sullivan touch. Okay, fellas, that's all. See you later. Hello. Corey, hello, darling. Where the blazes are you? I'm in Clearwater, Nevada. Clearwater? Well, when are you coming back? Now, don't talk. Just listen. I've got a show practically wrapped up for you. Fresh as a daisy. Different. I've sent a recording of it into town with Leroy Brinker. Leroy? What are you doing with that grade A heel? Double-crossing me? Well, that's what Leroy thinks. But, sweetheart, I'm really saving that precious neck of yours. Now, all you have to do is go to Leroy's office and steal the recording. Steal it? That's right. Then listen to it. You'll get the idea of the whole show. As soon as I get this hick author signed up, I'll be in. Yeah, but, Corey, I can't just go and steal a record. What do you think I am? I know what you are, precious. That's why I know you can steal it. Hello, Wimpy. How are you? Uh, and take care of yourself, Mama, and, and uh, watch your step, and everything will be all right, Mama. Goodbye, Mama. Mama? Hi. But, Pinky, I thought you'd gone to bed. I wasn't sleepy. Oh, I hope it wasn't on my account. Well, in a way, it was. I've been thinking about what you said at dinner, about my selling people are funny. I've given it a lot of thought. Oh, well, Pinky, you mustn't let anything I said sway you. 
I just told you to follow your heart. That's just it. I believe in that. But now that you've changed my viewpoint... Yes, Pinky? I... Oh, your foot! Oh, yes. Oh, th thank you. Uh, uh, you were saying, Pinky? Well, I've just about decided that I ought to... Yes, Pinky? The Castellans. The Castellans? They're my neighbors. They're wonderful people. Oh, you were saying about the show, Pinky. They're having a celebration. Their son, Jose, is back on his furlough. Come on over with me. Uh, Do you think you can make it? Oh, I, I don't need these. If you'll just put your arm around me and help me. Fine, thank you. And have you been, Pinky? Fine. Say, I want you to meet my friend, Miss Sullivan. These are my good neighbors, the Castellans. How do you do, Miss Sullivan? Sullivan? How are you? How about some music? Oh, no, Pinky. I'm too out of practice. Oh, come on, Jose. Play your marimba. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hey, Jose, won't you play your marimba? Hey, Jose, won't you play us a tune? Margarita, Pepita, and even Chiquita are willing and waiting to swoon. When you're swinging your singing marimba, every couple gets up for the dance. So, Jose, won't you play with that tinkle terrain and impart every heart with romance? How we sway as you play soft and mellow. Every girl wants to whirl with her fellow. So, Jose, won't you play your marimba? Every beat is a treat, and I quote. Hey, Jose, won't you play in that good neighbor way? And we'll clap as you tap every note. Vamos todos a cantar! Que sera, que sera lo que tiene. Que sera, que sera, que sera. Que sera que me da mucho gusto, me da mucho susto y me pongo a temblar. Que sera, que sera lo que tiene, que sera, que sera que caray. Que sera que me da mucho gusto, me da mucho susto y me pongo a temblar. Pero tú ni siquiera me miras, pero tú ni siquiera me Que será, que será lo que tiene, que será, que será. 
show us such a success, it's you. You know, you know, Miss Sullivan. Call me Corey. You know, Corey, Miss Sullivan, if you think I ought to, I'll sell the show. Oh, Pinky, you're wonderful. Oh, Pinky. Oh. You know what? I'm going to follow my heart. I'm going to Hollywood with you. Good morning, Mrs. McCarthy.
ahead, Mr. Pippinsey. Don't make your speech. Hey, 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 go on. Well, I'm too nervous. Well, go on, go on. Uh, uh, dear friends, yellow citizens, uh, fellow citizens, and distinguished pet, uh, guests, you all know I'm unaccustomed to public squeaking, uh, creaking, I mean, uh, sneak speaking, but uh, on this occasion, I cannot resist slaying a few birds, uh, a few uh, words. For today, Winky Pil uh, P Pinky Wilson is leaving for Hollywood. Let us all give three rousing beers for Stinky uh, Pinky Wilson. Well, I, I don't know what to say, but I want to thank you all for this wonderful send-off. You know, just because I'm going to Hollywood, I, I want you to know that the radio program still belongs to all of you. And with all the money I'll be getting, it's only fair that you share it with me. Siegel, I want you to start putting those backache pills that you invented on the market right away. And Jerry. Yes, Pinky? You and the rest of the boys start planning that clubhouse with the big fireplace. Oh. And Reverend Allen, I want you to start alterations on the church. Go right ahead with it. Put all new pews in, padded ones. Bless you, Pinky. All aboard. Goodbye, Grandma. Bye, Pinky. I'm going to miss you. Well, I miss you too, Pinky. But I want you to be a big success. You're listening to the Dixie Shindy. And as the moonlight shimmers down on the old plantation, we hear the voices of the happy folks from the cabin in the back door. All right, stop the record. We'll be ready to audition in a minute. Dixie Shindig, as southern as grits and gravy. Best show I ever thought of, Mr. Jamison. There's no other show on the air like it. Now, you see, the whole idea... Yes, I know, Goodell. Dripping with moonlight and magnolia. That's right. Sounds pretty good. Let's hear some more of it. All right, sir. All right, hurry along, please. Next act. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Come on, boy. Yeah, Yeah, now. Say, wait a minute. I didn't call you fellas, did I? Yes, sir. Your office called us all. Show. We're the Dixie Hobos from Danville. Great. Uh, okay, go ahead. Yes, sir, boy. Yes, sir, man. Ah! Angelina, that's my baby. Angelina, don't mean baby. Angelina, Angelina. Shoot the Vina to me, Angelina. Oh, I eat spaghetti twice just because she is so nice, Angelina. Angelina, the waitress at the pizzeria. I keep soup and minestrone just to be with her alone, Angelina. of bringing me the wrong odor. You know I ordered barbecue spaghetti. Now listen here, honey. What's your story, Morning Glory, giving me out with that chicken cacciatore? Hmm? What do you think, Mo? I want the same order, honey. The yeah. same order, baby. Yeah. Lots of gravy on it. Yeah. Spaghetti. Yeah. Same order you gave him. Yeah. With lots of gravy, yeah. baby. I'll be dining at the Astor with the waitress from the pizzeria. Mia, Angelina, 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 Scalopini, 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 where's the chicken? Scacciadori, where's the chicken? Scacciadori, Angelina, Angelina, Pescatini, Scalopini, Angelina.
funny, vagabonds. Vagabonds? We's the Dixie Hobos from Danville. Oh, the Dixie Hobos, huh? What are you doing, molting? Dixie Hobos, huh? Uh-huh. Ah, come on, get out of here. Oh, you oh, no, 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 what are you trying to do, dollface? Blackface? <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you get the record? I sure did. Got Jameson in the booth now. Been auditioning for him. It's in the bag. Oh, good. Come on, let's go. Oh, hey. Right in the middle of NBC? Oh, NBC can use a little romance. to meet Miss Corey Sullivan, my writer, the cleverest in radio. So I see. <laughs> How do you do, Miss Sullivan? How do you do? Let's get on with this, if you don't mind. All right. <laughs> All right, and now we'll go from the deep south to Harlem with Ann Jenkins and her Boogie Woogie special. Wait till you hear this gal. She's terrific. <laughs> All right, Miss Jenkins, we're ready for you now. I had him eating right out of my hand. Where did you get that program? Off that record you told me to steal from the Roy. Show me that record. Okay. What? Oh, this is fine. Well, what's the matter? Nothing. Except you stole the wrong recordings. Stole the rope. Simple little thing like stealing a record from the Roy. Any moron could do it, but not you, you Cretan. Cretan? Smile, smile, smile. You want him to catch on? Well, it's a good thing I brought Pinky along with Pinky? me. Pinky? The author. He can outline the right show for us. That's wonderful. Where is he? Well, I, I lost him at Union Station. You lost. Well, now who's a Cretan? Smile. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to take any chances on your pinky. Jameson sold on this show, and that's the one I'm going to sell him. But this show belongs to Leroy. He's been peddling this Dixie goulash for months. All right, mastermind, what do I do? You sold him, super salesman. Now unsell him. <laughs> unsell him? Oh, I can't do that. Oh, yes, you can, dollface. When Leroy gets his account. Leroy, Leroy. Say, where did you get mixed up with that character anyway? He's just trying to sell me a rather attractive bill of goods. If you don't get in there and start pitching, I'm liable to be in the market. <laughs> <laughs> Then you want to sell it. 
Well, I'm It's just that this show is mediocre. Every other show in the air is just like you it. said. I know. I just wanted you to see what, what some other producer might try to palm off on you. But not Johnny Goodell. No, sir. When you see what I've really got lined up what for you. What is it? <laughs> well, it's a show that, uh, it's a great show. It's perfect to sell Lawrence B. James some products. Just ordinary people playing parlor games. Uh, yeah, yeah, in a radio station. Oh, it's, it's big, it's got scope, uh, uh, audience participation. Yes, audience participation. Well, it's all very well and good, but where is the show? When can I see it? You've only three days left. Why, that's plenty of time. Uh... <clears throat> <laughs> oh, Johnny! <laughs> now, if you'll just look at this show, Mr. Please, I'm sure you won't want to look at oh, any well, of them. Well, 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 Johnny Goodell. Hello, Johnny. <laughs> What's new, as if I didn't know? <laughs> Say, too bad to hear about you losing the humbug show. <laughs> yes, wasn't it? Now, if you'll tell, please. I'm sorry, Mr. Jameson, but... Jameson? Well, well, how do you do, Mr. Jameson? I'm happy to know you. Thanks for introducing us, Johnny. Yeah, Welcome to Hollywood, Mr. Jameson. Brinker's the name. Leroy Brinker. And I have a little radio show that you're going to love. Now, Mr. J Just ordinary people playing parlor games. A show with real human interest. Heart. Audience participation. Why, you'll love it, I'm sure. Oh, you radio people all talk alike. I can't stand any more of this. I'm going back to my hotel. I'll be over to see you, Mr. Jameson. Oh, Johnny, give my regards to Corey, if you should happen to see her. <laughs> Too bad about Brinker. Sad case. He was a great saxophone player. Oh, great, but <laughs> blew his brains out, you know. Uh, never mind about Brinker. I'll give you 48 hours to produce another show. 48 hours, not one second more. 48 hours, yes. Well, <laughs> let's synchronize our watches, shall we? Right. Roger. your radio program. You're gonna lock up the deal for us. Forget after the favor you fellas did for me. Hey, have another sandwich. My grandma made them. They're good, aren't they? Yeah. Man, you're a ready Joe. Ready for what? When we say ready, we don't mean ready. We mean vuta, zuta, copacetic. Yeah, in other words, ready. Are you ready, ready? Yeah, I'm ready. A vuta, zuta, copacetic. Yeah. Yes. That's it. This is it, right over here. This is it. We've office? been here before. Come on. He's waiting. Oh, fine, at last. Pinky Wilson? Can you describe him? No, no, I can't describe him to you, but it's very important that I locate him. Yeah, all right. Didn't I tell you Mug never to come around again? Yeah, give me this. Are you sure Miss Sullivan works here? Yeah, that's just Johnny. He's always popping off. Go ahead. Well, don't worry go about ahead. him. He's all right. right. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Pink. Hello? Yeah, that's right. He's angry. Oh, he's no, not mad. Now, remember what you promised us about the yeah, job? Get the go job. ahead. Now, come on, Pinky. No, I'm... Uh, oh, come oh, on. Oh, you're not going to back, back out on that. No. I'm going to bounce these guys once and for all. I thought I told you guys to stay out of here. Now, if you come around once more, I'm going to call out the riot squad. Now, get out of here. Pinky! It's Pinky! Oh, Pinky! Well, and well. Come on in. Am I glad to see you? <laughs> oh. Well, well, here. Here, sit down, sit down, sit down. Have a cigar. How have you been, huh? Where have you been, Pinky? I've been worried about you. Well, uh, there was a lady at the railroad station. She had a, a little boy and a little girl and a baby and three suitcases. So I helped her in the bus, and before I know it, the bus started and I was locked in. Yeah, that's Aww. fine, now that you're here. And uh, when I got back to the depot, you were gone. So I went to every radio station in town, and I finally... I met these fellas. <laughs> and uh, I told them who I was, and they told me who they were, and I told them about you, and, well, <laughs> here I am, and I'm ready. Zoot root. Reed. Yes, Reed. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Now, about the show. The show? Yeah. Well, uh, what about Mr. Brinker? You oh, said well, that well, he... Well, dear, uh, Mr. Goodell, this is Mr. Goodell, and, and he's taking Mr. Brinker's place. 
Oh, yeah, as you see, you see, Brink, uh, Brink uh, had to have his adenoids out. Every year at this time, he uh, has to have them taken out, you see. Oh, that's too bad. Mr. Pippensiegel had his adenoids out. He had a terrible time. One of them fell right in back of his lamp. Yes, that's and fine. It... Now, it's too bad, really. Now, about the program. <laughs> Please, please listen to them. I, I promised them, and after all they've done for me... It's I know, later, later. Come on. All right. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, 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 now, just a minute. I don't think you're the man to produce my show. If you haven't got time to listen to people, to do my show right, you've got to like people. Isn't that right, Miss Sullivan? Of course, Pinky. Johnny will be delighted to hear your friends. Why, certainly. Johnny has plenty of time, exactly 46 hours, but... Don't mind me, boys. Go right ahead. Just make my office your home. Go ahead. Don't take a shot. Oh, fine. Oh, fine. In the beginning of this great, great world, man first found perfect expression in the dance. <laughs> now, down through the ages have been handed us many phases of Tepsichore. Now, we'd like to play for you something of a new trend, beautiful, sweet Tepsichore. Tepsichore? What's that? that was the dance! Oh! Oh! The old square dance is back again. Clear the barn and coop the hen. Hire the band for five and ten. The old square dance is back again. The old square dance is back to stay. Hi, old Dobbin, and clear the hay. Hurry up, Zeke, it's time to play. The old square dance is back to stay. Grab your punter, Nelly Brown. Swing her around and around and around. Toss her away like a jitterbug, then you bring her right to back and you give her a hug. The old square dance is back again. Clear the barn and coop the hen. Hire the band for five and ten. The old square dance is back again. <laughs>
tomorrow afternoon at NBC, just as we go over the air, full audience. All right, I'll be there. Yes, yes. No, he's playing it now, Brinker. That was Goodell. I'm giving him one last chance. He has a show ready to audition for me tomorrow at 3. But I'm sure this is the program you're going to buy. Not now, please. If I don't like Goodell's show, I'll listen to yours. This will only take a minute. Not now, please. Then you're seeing his show tomorrow. At 3. I'll be seeing you, Mr. Jameson. Goodbye. Say, driver, how long does it take to get to NBC? It's exactly 3 o'clock, and I should be there right now. Just a, a wee turn to the right and a wee turn to the left, and we'll be there for you know it. Jameson left the hotel a half an hour ago. He'll get here. If he doesn't, we're making an audition record. We'll play it for him. If he gets here by 3.30, though, otherwise we'll have to be out. People are funny! <laughs> the People Are Funny program from Hollywood. And here's the man who will help you earn your laughs, Art Linkletter. Thank you, folks. Welcome to People Are Funny. This is the new show in which you, our studio audience, take part. Playing games, doing stunts, and proving to everyone everywhere that people are funny. Pinky, who's the first volunteer chosen by our studio audience? Mr. John Southby from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, Mr. Southby, meet your host, Mr. Art Linkletter. How do you do, Mr. Southby? This is important. Have you done much roller skating? I've never done any. Never done any? Fine, you're just the man we're looking for. Pinky, <laughs> take him over to the chair. And sit, be comfortable, Mr. Southby. Just sit right down there. Now, boys, Strap the roller skates on him. We're gonna fix him up for a wonderful time tonight. <laughs> as long as you haven't had any experience, Mr. Southby, People Are Funny is going to provide some free roller skating instruction for you. Here they are. A redhead, a brownette, a blonde, and a brunette. Aren't they lovely? Look at Mr. Southby Bridge. All right, girls, give him his first lesson. That's it, up out of the chair. Easy now, watch it, he's very fragile. <laughs> There they go. And now, girls, I think you can leave him on his own. He really landed on his own. Mr. Southby, we have a nice, big, a gooey birthday cake just to help you keep your balance. Now, Mr. Southby, you can really have fun. Away they go with the airplane spin. And now the girls let him go. Here he goes, around and around again in great big spins. I thought he had the mic here for a minute. Now he's coming in big, wide circles. Look out! Thank you. That little fall. <laughs> I told you we'd be here for you, Norton. Know here you are. Cabby! This isn't NBC. You, Cabby, come back here. Blast your children, hide. And now, folks, the next two volunteers from our studio audience who will take part in the final stunt of the program, can you be a pilot? Do you think that you could make the grade as a test pilot, Mr. Tuttle? No. Did you say no? <laughs> yes. Yes, that's the answer we wanted, yes. You're going to be a test pilot tonight, Mr. Tuttle. Pinky, take him away and let his blood pressure simmer down. Take him right out there. They, we'll call you back in just a few minutes. There they go. What your husband doesn't know is that he's going to be flying blind and you're going to be the anti-aircraft gunner. How's your range? Pretty good, I think. Pretty good. You better make it perfect, because here's your anti-aircraft gun, 
A seltzer bottle. <laughs> er, help Mrs. Tuttle up into the anti-aircraft chair. Go right up. That's it. Turn around. Be comfortable and take good aim. Because every time Mr. Tuttle comes by, you're going to let him have it. Won't that be fun? Oh, boy. Oh, murder. What has he done to you? <laughs> OK, fix the mic, Er. Pinky boy, uh, let Mr. Tuttle come in and uh, fix him up to fly blind. I better not go in there just now. I'm late. They're waiting for me. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> That's what we told you. Jesus! Jesus! Unharm me! Well, take it away. All right, take it away. He's such a nice fellow. Hey, how are you? How are you? Mr. Tuttle. You are wonderful. How are you? You are wonderful. What happened? You are a wonderful contestant. You are a wonderful oh, shot, Mrs. Tuttle. Yes. And Mr. Tuttle, you were superb, wasn't he, Pinky? Fine. It's Jameson. Jameson? You're going to get the grand prize of the evening. A set of sterling silver for you. For being such a good sport. <laughs> that a good sport, you. You're not my husband. I should hope not. Thomas! Thomas! Mr. Jameson, I, I'm terribly sorry. This is a great mistake. You call this an audition. I'll sue you for assault and battery, and I'll prosecute the case myself. But I can assure you, or I do. Poor Pinky. Oh, I suppose I was the one that stuck Jameson in that crazy contraption. Oh, stop blaming Pinky. It wasn't his fault any more than it is yours or mine. Oh, it wasn't your fault either, huh? Well, who brought this backwoods fiddle flap in here anyway? Here. Yeah. You can't speak to Corey that way. Oh, sit down. So, when everything's going great, you're a great guy. When everything's all wrong, you're the only one who's right. Oh, now, Corey. Save your breath. I'm through. I'm sick of being a stooge and the almost was Mrs. John Goodell for the past eight years. You can take this and keep it. Oh, now, wait a minute. If you don't mind, I'm going to gather up all the material I've worked on so hard to make you the big, important executive you think you are. So you made me what I am today, huh? <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. All right, go ahead. Here's some more to add to your collection. I've got along without you before and I will again. Out of here before I suffocate. I will, and you can keep this. It might help brighten up your old age. Why don't you tell me about him and you and this? Oh, there are a lot of things I should have told you, but they're not important now. Look, the show hasn't got a ghost of a chance. You may as well go back to Clearwater, where you belong. Oh, but I can't go back. Remember the promises I made? The church and the boys' clubhouse? Mr. Pippin Siegel's pills? Oh, Pinky, what have I done to you? Nothing. You've been real nice to me. Nice? You're supposed to understand people, and you call me nice. Don't you understand? I strung you along. Gave you a lot of double talk about following your heart. Didn't sprain my ankle either. I was just faking. Yeah, I knew it all the time. I just liked the way you did it. You did? Well, I don't know how to talk to anybody like you. Don't you understand? I'm a first-class double-crosser. Why don't you get mad? Tell me off. I've got it coming. Well, I think you're fine. Real. Anybody who can admit their mistakes is noble. You really mean that, don't you? Yes, I do. And you've taught me something. I realize now that I've got to go back home and admit my mistakes. Well, go. Go 
Going home then before I turn into a crybaby. Goodbye, Miss Sullivan. Thanks for everything. Goodbye. to get that honey off Luke's feet. People are funny, take care if, of everything. If Goodell had only had a show like this for me, he'd have saved me an awful lot of trouble. Oh, that Goodell. Do you think you can get this in the air by Friday night? Today is Wednesday, you know. Two days. Oh, yes, yeah, certainly, certainly. Excellent. Let's get on with the contract. Fine, I have the contracts all ready for you to sign. You know, you're going to find out, Mr. Jameson, that you're dealing with a man of action. Miss Young, will you bring in the Jameson contracts, please? Yes, sir. You certainly won't go wrong with this radio show. It has everything. Hmm, a megaphone. How well I remember them. Used to have one myself. Yale, you know. Oh, cheerleader? Hardly. Bit of a singer. I had a rather unusual quality. This sort of enhanced it. Well, I know just what you mean. Do you still sing? Oh, I'm a bit rusty. Don't have the time except to class reunions. Contracts are ready, Mr. Brinker. Oh, thanks. Just let me have them, please. You know, there are many compositions for mixed voices, but personally, I prefer the rondelay. Do you like the rondelay? Uh, rondelay? Oh, I'm very fond of rondelay. I yes. have in mind the little French-Canadian one, for which I've written some English lyrics. If I had the assistance of a few voices, I could give you the proper presentation of it. Well, I'd be very glad to get them for you. Do you really think you oh, could? Oh, certainly, certainly. Miss, uh... Young. Indeed you are, and pretty, too. <laughs> Would you join me? Thank you. Like your lovely hair. Oh, I like your lovely hair. Lovely hair. Lovely hair. Alouette. Alouette. Oh, oh Alouette, gentle Alouette. Alouette, you're a pretty thing. How I like your lovely eyes. How I like your lovely eyes. Lovely eyes. Lovely eyes. Lovely hair. Lovely hair. Alouette. Alouette. Oh, Alouette, gentle Alouette. Alouette, you're a pretty thing. How I like your lovely nose. How I like your lovely nose. Lovely nose. Lovely nose. Lovely eyes. Lovely eyes. Lovely, eyes. lovely hair. Lovely hair. Alouette. Alouette. Oh, Alouette, gentle Alouette. Alouette, you're a pretty thing. How I like your lovely mouth. How I like your lovely mouth. Lovely mouth. Lovely mouth. Lovely nose. Lovely nose. Lovely eyes. Lovely eyes. Lovely hair. Lovely hair. Alouette, Alouette. Alouette. Oh, Alouette, gentle Alouette. Alouette, you're a pretty thing. How I like your graceful form. How I love your graceful form. Graceful form. Graceful form. Graceful form. Lovely mouth. Lovely mouth. Lovely Lovely nose, lovely nose, lovely eyes, lovely eyes, lovely hair, lovely hair, alouette, alouette, alouette. oh, alouette, gentle alouette, alouette, you're a pretty big one, alouette, gentle alouette, 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 you're a pretty big one. Excellent. That was fine. It's a lucky thing you didn't stick to singing, Mr. Jameson. You'd have robbed me of a career. <laughs> of course, I still would have had my golden saxophone. Saxophone? I didn't do so bad with one myself. Uh, let's get on with the contract. Yes, yes, be sure. You mind if I look it over? No, no, no. Go right ahead. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, oh. I enjoyed that very much. Uh, you were very good. Thank you very much, you. fellas. You were great. Remind me to send you a couple of tickets to my broadcast. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes, yes. You I enjoyed that very much. You and I rise on the crest of the wave once again. Congratulations, Mr. Jameson. You've bought yourself a great radio show. Thank you. Oh, my first saxophone. Oh, a lovely instrument. A thank beautiful you. instrument. Oh, thank you. 
Would you care to try it? Oh, I don't think I could even run the scale again. Oh, I'm sure you could. Why don't you try it? Go ahead. I've even forgotten how to hold it. Let me watch you. Maybe I'll get it again. I'm sure you'll get it as soon as you blow a note. Go ahead, try it. Oh, no, I couldn't. <laughs> oh, go ahead. I wish you would. You try it. All right, if you insist. Oh, but I do. But remember the old saying, what I blow in here may be entirely different from what comes out here. Oh, <laughs> what a sense of humor, Mr. Jameson. What a sense of humor. <laughs> Go ahead. Here goes. Corey, where have you been? I've been waiting to hear from you. Well, there are a lot of things I've got to tell you about. There's only one thing I want to hear. Have you settled everything with Pinky Wilson? Because I've sold the show to Jameson. You what? Yes, yeah, sure. Here's the contract. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, me. Well, what's the matter? Aren't you happy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've got a funny way of showing it. What's wrong? We've got Jameson, but we haven't got Pinky. Well, didn't you sign him up? Johnny did. Johnny? But how now, could Johnny... Now, down. I'll explain everything. I finally got Pinky to say he'd sell the show to you. We arrived this morning, but he got lost at the station, so I came on ahead. And then I remembered. I'd given him one of my old cards with Johnny's address on it. Sounds mighty fishy to me. Oh, now, Leroy. If you're not going to believe me, how are we going to be partners? Okay, then what? Well... I went to Johnny's office. Pinky had already been there and left. So I raced over to NBC, and what do you think I found? Don't tell me. Johnny, that double-crosser had found out from Pinky about the People of Funny show and had already signed him to an exclusive contract. That's fine. I got Jameson signed, and we don't even own the show. And you were going to fix everything. Where's Pinky now? Gone back home. I'd like to go over and... Tear that Goodell apart. Well, now, he's pretty big, you know. He's liable to punch you in the nose. Is that so? Well, he'll be mighty sorry if he punches me in the nose. What'll you do, honey? Bleed all over him? Now, Corey, there's not a cowardly bone in my body, and you know it. Of course, every now and then, the meat around him gets a little jumpy. Mm. What do we do next? Well... You know, there is something we could... Ah, oh, no, I guess not. Well, what? What is it? Well, you know, Pinky will do almost anything I want him to. So, if Johnny didn't have the signed contract, I could get Pinky to do the show for us. Yes, but Johnny has the contract. He has now. But somebody could steal it from him. Steal it? Can't do that. Catch you, arrest you, put you in jail, you can't steal. Who'd you have in mind to do the stealing? Now, wait a minute. You don't mean me. I don't like the tone of what you're not saying. It's right in Johnny's filing cabinet. It'll be a cinch. Now, wait a minute. I'm not doing any stealing for anybody. Oh, Roy. <laughs> I'm not doing any stealing. Nothing will help you because I'm not doing any stealing. I hope I don't get caught. Hello? Hello, Johnny. Corey, darling. Oh, I knew you'd call. I knew you wouldn't go to work for Brinker. Not when Johnny needs you, remember? Your Johnny? Now, don't give me any of that your Johnny business. That's over for good. Yes, I understand, of course. But where are you? I've got something for you. I'm at Leroy's office. Leroy's? Now, understand this, Johnny. Whatever I'm doing, I'm doing for Pinky's sake. And you'd better play ball with me or you won't have anything. Now, I've just had a talk with Leroy. Mm-hmm. Yes, I will. Goodbye, Corey.
is it? Hey, Ben, Janitor, he used to come in to clean up. You're new here, aren't you? Yes. Where's Grogan? A Grogan, uh, a Grogan, uh, he been sick to stomach, but they clean very good. They start here, if you don't mind. Oh, no, no, go right ahead. Make all the noise you want. Oh, good. Uh, good. What goes on here? Ah, drop it, Leroy. You do a terrible Swede. Well, it's just a, a gag. Can't you take a little joke? <laughs> <laughs> Burglary. Yeah, that's what it is. It is inside pocket, Joe. Red-handed, Mr. Goodell. Good for five years. At least. Oh, now, just a minute. Whom do you think you're pushing around? Whom? You, that's whom. Now, take it easy, fellas. I can explain everything if you just give me a chance. Leroy, there's one thing I can't stand. Dishonesty. Take him away. Leroy! What in the world is this? I've been framed. As if you didn't know. People are funny! <laughs> Welcome to People Are Funny, Mr. Hinckley. Now, do you believe in taking chances? No. You don't? Don't worry, Mr. Hinckley. You aren't taking any chances. You haven't got a chance. <laughs> now, Mr. Hinckley, did you say you were married? Uh, yes, Mr. Linkletter, very much so. Is your wife here tonight? No, my mother-in-law brought me. Oh, that's <laughs> fine, Mr. Hinckley, because you must know all about runs and women's stockings. We're going to give you a chance to go out on Hollywood Boulevard and inspect the stockings of all the ladies you can. You think you can do that? Isn't that kind of dangerous? You'll find out. Here's the tape measure. You measure all the runs you can and bring back all the women with runs longer than six inches, and you'll win yourself a swell prize. I might get arrested. Oh, no. Goodbye, Mr. Hinckley. Say goodbye to him, audience. Goodbye. Terrific. It'll last as long as radio, eh, Mr. Jameson? It's fine, thanks, Mr. Sullivan. I'm going upstairs to listen to the client's booth. There's too much commotion here. Excuse me. And now we come to a department of people who are funny that promises to be very interesting if you have strong nerves. Who's our next vic uh, guest, Irv? Uh, Mr. John B. Hapsford of Davenport, Art. How do you do, How Mr. Are you, Mr. Hapsford? Mr. Hapsford? Mr. Hemsworth, have you ever heard of William Tell? Oh, yes. Well, tell us about him. Well, he, he was the fellow that shot the apple off his son's head with a bow and arrow. Very fine, Mr. Hemsworth. Very fine. What am I holding in my hand, Mr. Hemsworth? An apple. An apple. Does this suggest anything to you? N no. It does to us, Mr. Hemsworth. <laughs> You know, tonight we're going to determine whether or not history repeats itself. We tried to bring William Tell to Hollywood, but he couldn't get a reservation. So we found a man who had a reservation. Indian Chief Red Cloud, the famous bow and arrow expert. Bring him on with a nice hand, folks. There he is. Uh, that's it, right over here, Chief, and we're all set to do the stunt. Now the first thing we'd like to have... Chief, Chief! the audience over here. That's it. Now I'd like to have you shake hands with William Tell's son. 
Chief, that's the microphone. Mr. Hapsworth's over here. Can't you see? I can't see a thing without my glasses. <laughs> now, don't worry, Mr. Hapsworth. The chief can shoot with his eyes shut. Of course, he doesn't hit what he shoots at, but still he can shoot. And just to prove it, we're going to have him take a couple of practice shots at that target back there. Boys, bring out the target. Add up, boy, Chief. Limber up. Start shooting now. Let's go. Oh, audience, the other way. Not this way. You're shooting at me. Take the Chief back there. Mr. Hapsworth, his sense of direction is just a little poor, but he'll get it. Now, Mr. Hapsworth, just imagine that you're the figure back there on the target. There's an apple on your head. Okay, Chief, make it a bullseye. Oh, a beauty! Oh, just a moment, Mr. Hapsworth. Oh, oh how did I ever get into this? <laughs> Don't worry. Now, Irv, take Mr. Hapsworth over there and put him up against the target. That's it. Oh, folks, Mr. Hapsworth's having more fun here tonight. Put him up there. That's it. Look at him. <laughs> uh, put the apple on his head, Irv. That's it, right there. Can you see the apple, Chief? What apple? <laughs> what apple? That's all right, Mr. Hapsworth. <laughs> all right, up with the bow and arrow. Ready? Aim. Fire! Mr. Hello, everybody. Well, well glad Peggy. to see you, Peggy. Oh, glad to see you. Come, 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 come on. Come right in. We're all waiting to see you. Come along, Peggy. Come on. Come on, Peggy. Come on. Come right in, Peggy. Come in. Come, come, right in, Peggy. come in. in. You look tired. Oh, Peggy, my boy, how does it feel to be a big success? We've gone right ahead with the plans for the church. Yes, and we've already started on a new clubhouse. You sure put Clearwater on the map, Peggy. I'm not a success. It's terrible. I've got to tell you. What's the matter, Pinky? Well, the clubhouse and the church and Mr. Pip and Siegel. Well, it's all off. The radio show was off, too. I'm the biggest failure in the world. Oh, that's very funny. Oh, oh what a joke. <laughs> well, folks, that'll give you just a rough idea of what to expect on the new Jameson product program. From here, people are funny gets wilder and funnier. It's on the air. People are funny. They put it on. Oh, Grandma. <laughs> That's wonderful. They put it on. Of course it is. That's why we're all here. Miss Sullivan phoned us. You were coming home. But how did she do it? Mr. Jameson, Brinker, Cadell, they were all... She got them all to work together, and they put it on. Miss Sullivan did it. Uh, I mean, Corey. Be back, folks. Remember the little man we sent out on Hollywood Boulevard to measure the runs in women's stockings? Bring him in, Leroy. I'm surprised he's still at one feet. Well, Mr. Hinckley, come right in and tell us. Did you find any runs in the lady's stockings? Yes, sir, I did. Oh, you're a brave man. Tell us what happened. <laughs> oh, folks. A great, big, black shiner. But don't worry, Mr. Hinckley. Wait till you see the prize in that black aisle brighten up. Uh, I hope so. Tell us, did you find any runs longer than six inches? Yes, sir, lots of them. Did you bring the ladies back with you? Yes, he did, Art. Four of them. They're good sports, too. They're right over here. Well, bring them in. Okay. We want to see the runs. Mr. Hinckley can't have all the fun. <laughs> Hurry up, ladies. Hurry up. What a lovely group of women. Ladies, you know the one with the longest run wins the prize. You don't mind showing your uh, stockings. Well, up with the skirts. Oh, wow, look at that. Eight inches. Ten inches. Oh, there's a honey. That's a foot, Mr. Hickley. What's the matter with the fourth lady? <laughs> Look, she was 
Betsy got caught on a barbed wire fence. No use measuring that one, Mr. Hinckley. She wins the prize. Give him a nice hand, folks. Hey, those guys again. You know, ladies. Why, they're men, all four of them. Hey, wait a while. Folks, they fool me. Believe me. Say, fellas, what's the gag? Ah, uh, we've been trying to get on the radio for so long, we just had to do something. You want to get on the air? Well, what do you do? What do we do? We'll, we'll show, show you. you. We got the instruments right out there. Well, yeah. come on, show oh, us. Come on, let's go. Hey, wait a while. You sure someone won't throw us out? Yeah, Not a it. chance. This is people are funny. <laughs> <laughs> and folks, this definitely proves that anything can happen on this program. Oh, well. <laughs> I guess they deserve a break, too. What little ditty you boys gonna do? It's a new thing called chuck a luck -a. Oh, sounds just right. It's a new game, got a new name. Easy as ABC. I'm gonna tell you what you are. And when I tell you what you are, make believe that's what you are. And follow me. Let's go chuck a luck -a. Let's do something new. Let's go. Chuck a luck and stop. You're a kangaroo. Chuck, why you dancing? Let's start raising cane. Hands up, why you dancing? Stop. You're an aeroplane. Bing to a fancy skater. Club waiter. Go, chuck a luck and let's have fun and play. Let's go, chuck a luck and chuck your troubles away. Let's go, chuck, chuck, chuck a luck and let's give this dance a whirl. Let's go, chuck a luck and stop. You're a glamour girl. Chuck, why the dancing? Join the merry clan. Let's go, Chuck, Chuck, luck and stop. You're a Dodger fan. Chuck, Chuck, while you're dancing, baby, let's have fun and mug. Heads up while you're dancing, stop. You're a jitterbug. Change to a nanny goat man. <laughs> Change to a wild robot man. Where do you think you're going with my wedding ring? Oh, Corey, darling. Right in the middle of NBC? NBC can always use a little romance. But if you can sell the program, Pinky, this is the only entertainment a lot of people in Clearwater have. We haven't even got a church large enough for socials or to hold meetings for the Clearwater Boys Club. I'm the leader. I know, but if you should sell the program... I think you're perfectly right, Mr. Wilson. This show does belong to the people. How can you say that? Uh, will you all excuse us, please, oh. for just a moment? Thank you, Leroy. Thank you. She understands. I think you're making a mistake, Pinky. What kind of a partner Shh. are you, anyway? Here, shove this under your coat quickly. What's this all about? It's a complete record of the show. It has everything you need on it. I don't get it. Look, 
take it with you. Have the car fixed. You leave this pinky to me. I'll handle him. Oh, strategy, hey? Uh -huh. Run fine now, Luke. You sure did a swell job. Be gentle with her now. She's in great pain. Corey! Easy now. Be careful. Corey. Oh, wait a minute, boy. What happened? Oh, poor girl. She tripped over my shoelace. It was lucky I was standing close enough to catch her. She just sprained both her ankles. Oh. Oh. She can't drive home with you tonight. It'll be too painful. We're going to take her home with us. Will you help her in the car? I have to get something. Thank you, folks. Uh, would you put those in the car, please? Come on, fellas. Let's return these coats. What's the idea of the big act? Somebody has to stay here to get Pinky to sell his program. I think I'm a bit more appealing than you. There's no argument there, my pet. Now, look, take the record back to your office and don't talk to anybody. Just sit tight till you hear from me. Fine pack of writers. What I want is a show with the Sullivan touch. Hello? Yes. The Sullivan touch. Okay, fellas, that's all. See you later. Hello. Corey, hello, darling. Where the blazes are you? I'm in Clearwater, Nevada. Clearwater? Well, when are you coming back? Now, don't talk. Just listen. I've got a show practically wrapped up for you. Fresh as a daisy. Different. I've sent a recording of it into town with Leroy Brinker. Leroy? What are you doing with that great A heel? Double-crossing me? Oh, that's what Leroy thinks. But, sweetheart, I'm really saving that precious neck of yours. Now, all you have to do is go to Leroy's office and steal the recording. Steal it? That's right. Then listen to it. You'll get the idea of the whole show. As soon as I get this hick offer signed up, I'll be in. Yeah, but, Corey, I can't just go and steal a record. What do you think I am? I know what you are, Precious. That's why I know you can steal it. Hello, Wimpy. How are you? Uh, and take care of yourself, Mama, and, and uh, watch your step, and everything will be all right, Mama. Goodbye, Mama. Mama? Hi. But, Pinky, I thought you'd gone to bed. I wasn't sleepy. Oh, I hope it wasn't on my account. Well, in a way, it was. I've been thinking about what you said at dinner, about my selling people are funny. I've given it a lot of thought. Oh, well, Pinky, you mustn't let anything I said sway you. I just told you to follow your heart. That's just it. I believe in that. But now that you've changed my viewpoint... Yes, Pinky? I... Oh, your foot! Oh, yes. Oh, th thank you. Uh, uh, you were saying, Pinky? Well, I've just about decided that I ought to... Yes, Pinky? The Castellan. Castor who's? They're my neighbors. They're wonderful people. Oh, you were saying about the show, Pinky. They're having a celebration. Their son, Jose, is back on his furlough. Come on over with me. Uh, Do you think you can make it? Oh, I, I don't need these. If you'll just put your arm around me and help me. Thank you. And have you been, Pinky? Fine. Say, I want you to meet my friend, Miss Sullivan. 
These are my good neighbors, the Castellans. How do you do, Miss Sullivan? Oh, hello, hello. How are you? How about some music? Oh, no, Pinky. I'm too out of practice. Oh, come on, Jose. Play your marimba. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm out of practice. I'm out of practice. Hey, Jose, won't you play your marimba? Bring, bring on the honey. <laughs> Folks, we really are going to give Luke the honey. All over the soles of his feet. <laughs> Smear it on stick, Jerry. Luke didn't think he was going to get that kind of honey. <laughs> Just a minute, Pinky. How are we going to get that honey off Luke's feet? People of funny takes care of everything. Lem, bring in the honey remover. I wish you could see the nice, friendly bear they just brought out here in the center of the state. Her name is Rosie, and she loves honey. Yeah. Look at Rosie flicking her tongue out. <laughs> Luke, we're going to let the bear eat the honey, and if you can hold in from laughing, you win the prize. I sure can try. All right, ready? Let her lick the honey. Wait, 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 wait. Excuse me, folks. These people are in trouble, Pinky. They need Luke to fix their car. I'm having fun. I don't want to fix nobody's car now. Why, Luke. Oh, my goodness, I forgot. I want everybody to meet Miss Sullivan and Mr. Brinker. This is my grandson, Pinky Wilson. How do you do, Miss Sullivan? Hello, Pinky. <laughs> Say, aren't you Leroy Brinker? Oh, uh, yes, that's right. <laughs> oh, folks, we're really honored. One of the big people of radio just walked into our studio. You all remember Leroy Brinker? And his golden saxophone. Oh, and his golden saxophone. <laughs> Thank you very much, folks. It's very gratifying to know you haven't forgotten me. I just want to say bonjour, folks. That's French. As a matter of fact, I speak French rather well. Uh, it was just last night I went into a restaurant and I ordered the entire meal in French. And was the waiter surprised? It was a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> and then on the way home... Uh, do you mind? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, and on the way home on the bus... Oh, speaking of buses, have you folks ridden on any buses recently? Boy, are they crowded. I rode on a bus yesterday that was so crowded, even some of the men were standing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would just like to tell one more joke this time, if I may. It seemed though the man and his wife were sitting in the living room, and the phone kept ringing and ringing. And he'd answer it each time. He'd say, oh, I'm sorry, you've got the wrong number. <laughs> no, no, wait till I finish the joke. <laughs> and this happened four or five times, you see. And finally, the wife said, honey, what seems to be the trouble? And the husband said, I don't know. He says, some darn fool must think this is the weather bureau. He keeps calling up, asking if the coast is clear. I just went out and fractured that uh -huh. audience to it. What's all this? Fan mail for Pinky Dinky's program. Boy, there's enough of it here. He's really popular, isn't he? Mm-hmm. People are funny. Just ordinary people playing parlor games. 
audience participation. A show with real human interest. Heart. You amaze me, Leroy. I really didn't think you'd catch on so quickly. What an idea for a radio show starring me. Why, with you writing it, Jameson will grab it. Mm -hmm. I think Jameson will go for it. You mean that it's all set? We're partners? Uh-huh. Angel, you've made the right decision. Now, as soon as the show is over, I'll make Pinky an offer. Oh, look, Leroy, let me do the dickering, will you? Well, suppose I should get a brilliant idea. Let's take a chance on that, shall we? Well, don't forget, all come next week. We have some very funny stunts arranged for you. Mr. Wilson, could I speak to you, please? Yes. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye. Mr. Wilson, I want yeah, to tell you how... your radio show, the idea, I mean. Coast to Coast, sponsored by a big-name product. You mean sell people a funny? Yeah. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. Well, come, come, Mr. Wilson, let's be sensible about this. Well, Mr. Brinker, you really got the wrong idea about this. You see, it isn't my show. It belongs to, uh, Mr. Griffin there, and Mr. Parkus, and the Tilliam sisters. And Mr. Pippensiegel more than anyone else. You see, I work in Mr. Pippensiegel's drugstore, and I got the idea for the whole show on his time. Uh, hey, Jose, won't you play us a tune? Margarita, Pepita, and even Chiquita are willing and waiting to swoon. When you're swinging your singing marimba, every couple gets up for the dance. So, Jose, won't you play with that tinkle terrain and impart every heart with romance? How we sway as you play soft and mellow. Every girl wants to whirl with her fellow. So, Jose, won't you play on the rimba? Every beat is a treat, and I quote. Hey, Jose, won't you play in that good neighbor way? And we'll clap as you tap every note. Vamos todos a cantar! Que se va, que se va, lo que se ve. Que se va, que se va, que se va. Que se va, que me da mucho gusto, me da mucho susto, y me pongo a temblar. Sullivan. Call me Corey. You know, Corey and Miss Sullivan, if you think I ought to, I'll sell the show. Oh, Pinky, you're wonderful. Oh, Pinky! Oh! Ouch! You know what? I'm going to follow my heart. I'm going to Hollywood with you.
Good morning, Mrs. McCarthy. Say, uh, by the way, how are you and Johnny getting along lately? Feel it, Leroy. There's something steaming under those pretty curls. Well, frankly, I came down here just to be near you. Oh, where have I heard that before? Oh, I don't know about that, but I do know something you haven't heard before. Now, this is strictly on canoe. Oh, strictly. Well, Lou Hurley just phoned me that Jameson canceled the humbug contract. Giving Johnny one week to get a new radio show together. He can do it. I think. Not without you, he can't. Why don't you think of your career? Team up with me. Write a radio show starring me and my golden saxophone. I'll produce it. Why, we'll sell it to Jameson before Johnny even gets started. If you think for a minute, Not I... just a moment. Don't make any hasty decisions. That only shows lack of good judgment. Why don't you ride back to Hollywood in the car with me, and we can talk it over on the way. How soon do we start? Just as soon as you can get out of those scanties. Don't you think I'd better put on some clothes first? They might stop us in Pomona. <laughs> well, you certainly have convinced me. You mean about us being partners? No, that I should have taken a train. Yes, we are. Where can we get a mechanic? Just two miles ahead in clear water. Would you drive us in? Well, what if people fall if they don't help each other? Climb in. Come on. Luke will fix you up. Sakes so alive, I forgot. Luke wouldn't be over in the garage now. He'd be on Pinky's radio program. He's my grandson. The mechanic? <laughs> no, Pinky. It's Saturday, you know. Everybody in Clearwater is on Pinky's radio show Saturday. Everybody? Oh, nearly.
down the minute another dream comes true. Every second that you're near me, the thrill is still the same as the first time I kissed you. Before I Good, Luke. Well, thank you, Pinky. Uh, tell us, Luke, around Clearwater, you're considered quite a hand with the gals, aren't you? <laughs> well, shucks, Pinky, I, I do all right, I guess. You know what they did to your forefathers when they got a bit too romantic? Can't say as I do. Show them, boys. <laughs> They're putting Luke in one of those old-fashioned Puritan stocks, you know, where you put your hands through the holes, and you put your feet through the holes, and they lock you up. Now that we're making you nice and comfortable, Luke, how would you like to have a little honey to keep you company? Well, all right, I guess. Well, all you have to do is answer this question. If you don't get it right, we take some of your clothes off. I mean, like your shoes or your socks. But don't worry. Just because people are funny is different. Even if you lose, you get the honey. <laughs> now, here's your question. How far away can you see a candle at night? 10 feet, 30 feet, 200 feet? Well, I could see one at 200 feet. Are you sure, Luke? Sure. No, I didn't say the candle was lit. Off with the shoes and socks, Mr. Siegel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Too bad, Luke. You should have known the answer to that one. You lost the quiz game. Now do I get the honey? <laughs> Absolutely. You certainly put us in the mood. And now to return to the Court of Inhuman Relations and that legal eagle of... Hello? Yeah. That attorney uh, this is Johnny Goodell. James okay, put him on. Humbug. Mr. Jameson? Well, this is a pleasure. Now, they told me you were getting back from Brazil today. The show's terrific, isn't it? Uh-huh. Great idea, this kangaroo court. The sponsor. First time he's heard the show, probably wants to congratulate me. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Jameson. It's... Sounded like you said, get it off the air. <laughs> a lot of noise in here. Uh, uh, hang on a minute, will you? Any more promotion, I'll have the court cleared. 
Whom did you say was asleep, Mr. District Attorney? The defense counsel, Your Honor, Valdemar Humbug. Go ahead, Mr. Jameson. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. Get it off the air. <laughs> Get it off the air? Oh, but, Mr. Jameson, your program is an outrage to the legal profession. Ridiculing lawyers. Making them out nincompoops and charlatans. But what's wrong with that? Do you realize that I'm not only the head of Ormsby Jameson Products, but an attorney? and an officer of the Counselors Club as well. But your advertising agency okayed it. Mr. Button himself. Button. If I hadn't been out of the country, he'd never okayed it. But, Mr. Jameson, I gave up all my other shows to devote all my time to this one. You, you, you can't just take it off the air like, like, like that. Oh, can't I? Well, you'd better have a new show ready next week, or I'll find one myself. I'm taking the plane for Hollywood tonight. Without Button. Mr. J... Oh, Right show, Johnny. Finished right on the nose. You lucky guy, you. Fishing, Mr. Sullivan! Fishing, Mr. Sullivan! Hey, boy. Call it home. Thank you. Good friend. Mr. Sullivan speaking. Long distance, put them on. Corey Sullivan's got more on the ball than any writer in radio. She'll get me a show. After the way you yelled at her for going to Las Vegas for a rep, you'd better write her a letter. Vagabonds again. I thought I told you guys to stay out of here. Oh, Mr. Goodell, stop ranking us with the Ricky Kicks. We know there's a place for us. You know, if I keep on throwing you guys out like this, I'll have to put in swinging doors. Yeah. Now get out of here. Come on, and don't come back. I told you that once before. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. All right. Yes, Mr. Corey Sullivan. Yes, Mr. Corey Sullivan, that's right. I'll bet she'll thank you for disturbing her peace. Corey? Hello, darling. This is Johnny. Your Johnny. My Johnny. You know, whenever your voice has that light in your eyes, I know something's brewing. What's up? Now, honey, is that a way to talk? I just call because I miss you. Still love me? You know I do. <laughs> Sun is doing wonders for me. I'm beginning to sparkle almost as much as your diamond. That's what I want to hear. Wait a minute, dollface. This sounds like a fast and feverish buildup. Come on, get to the point. <laughs> There is no point. I just called to hear your sweet voice. Or oh, as a matter of fact, there, there is something you ought to know. Jameson canceled the Humbug show and... Oh, so that's it. But, honey, this is on the level. You've got to come back. You're my only hope of getting a new show in time. Well, if you're really on the level, why don't you hop on a plane and come up here? I might be persuaded. There's going to be a full moon tonight. But, Corey, Jameson will be here today. Well, give him my love doll face and try to think of something. I'm not exactly in a thinking mood. Bye. Corey, listen to me. Hello, Corey. Surprise, surprise. Guess who? I don't know, but it's not Bing Crosby. Anybody with one ear can tell that. That's scintillating, my dear. Your dialogue is positively scintillating. So's yours. Tell me, what brings you here, Leroy? Isn't this place a bit rich for your blood? <laughs> <laughs> Whimsical little gal. <laughs> Relax while I change, Mr. Leroy. Okay. 